five scammers are cashing in on the coronation and trying to con people into spending hundreds on fake souvenirs. Rout's here to make sure you're not royally ripped off. Plus, with football concussion spotters being introduced at this year's Women's World Cup, Dr Pinnum explains what to do with a head injury at home and why cutting out screen time is crucial. And ahead of his hit show, Amol Rajan interviews returning to our screens tonight. He tells us why he prepared like a boxer before speaking to Sir Richard Branson. Welcome to Morning Live with me and Michelle. You saw it on breakfast this morning. We've yeah. been doing it on Morning Live all week. The big build-up to the coronation uh, this weekend. All looking forward to it as I'll wrap Dr. Poonin. Katia Jones, nice to see you. Poon in particular, she got the party <laughs> of all parties happening up in Glasgow. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Have you done everything? I am actually. I've got the bone china out. Oh, We're ready oh. with the bunting, <laughs> cake making with the kids. Oh, I'm so here for it. Oh, yes. nice. You doing anything? Uh, I am actually. Yeah, me and little Poppy, who's nearly three now. We're going to be making some crowns. Nice. Oh. Nanny's coming over as well, so we're going to do that together. Looking forward to it. Lovely. It's all going on. <laughs> it's all going on, isn't it? Uh, and we're also helping the Royal Voluntary Service crown another coronation champion today to mark this. This weekend's celebrations will be surprising a local hero whose grit and determination has brought one community closer together with a little help from our gardener, Mark Lane. Yeah, he says absolutely fantastic yeah. space, isn't he? Plus, uh, the winner of The One Show's Coronation Dish, Chef Adam Handling, will be showing us how to make his majestic uh, chicken pie. This was the moment he went on. Oh, got a little bit of a shot there, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> little went off. Proper surprise. Uh, the chicken pie, uh, they'll be set to be served at big lunches across the country uh, and it's perfect actually for any kind of celebration you have and he'll tell us how to make sure your pastry never has a what a soggy bottom <laughs> <laughs> got it <I'm> listening <laughs> <laughs> we're on to a winner with Strictly Fitness, aren't we, Katia? What we yes. did today? <laughs> well, all week we've been gathering moves ready to celebrate. So today is our last move. And it's nice and simple. Done by Scott Mills and John Clifton, the rolling of the arms. Alongside our core workout. Mm. Are we ready to celebrate? Yes, we're ready to celebrate. Yes. <laughs> Bring Scott, it ready. Scott will be dancing all next week in the leads for the Eurovision. Well, he's going to be oh, a busy yeah. boy, nice. isn't he? Yeah. Uh, all that coming up. Uh, Rav, also, um, anyone watching the show last Wednesday, actually, 26th of May, <clears throat> would have seen a piece that we did on um, Facebook Marketplace and, and the scams going on there. Our inbox has been inundated with yeah. messages and you're not surprised by that are you i'm not actually um i have to say we've had a lot of viewers get in touch about what's happened to them and in fact the head of security at tsb has said three out of five payment fraud scams that they see are actually to do with facebook marketplace yeah. so i'm not particularly surprised that so many people have got in touch i'm annoyed that they've had to get in touch uh, that it's happened to them and what we're seeing is scammers are actually seeing that creating a fake profile on Facebook is now sometimes not enough for them because people are getting wise to that and seeing that this is a fake profile. They've got no friends, they've got no pictures, it's a brand new account, so it must be a scam. So what they're actually doing is hijacking a genuine person's Facebook account and using that to commit their fraud. And that is exactly what's happened to one of our viewers, Sharon, and this is her heartbreaking story. My partner died on the 1st of February after a short illness and very unexpectedly. Due to the amount of time that I took off work when my partner was ill and in hospital and on ICU, I didn't have a job to go back to. So I started to worry about money. We owned a caravan and I knew it would be worth a fair amount of money. So I advertised that on uh, Marketplace. It was a kind of heartbreaking decision, but a, a practical one that I, I felt I had to make at the time. I received a couple of offers and then it went quiet for a little while. And then I had someone very interested in the caravan. Yeah, I was really hoping that this was going to be the sale um, to give me a bit of a buffer in my bank until I could, you know, go back to work. So the message came through, really interested in your caravan. I was nearly robbed yesterday by trying to buy another, so I need you to just verify your Facebook information. So at that point, he sent me a link. 
Feeling sorry for the buyer who said they were trying to avoid being scammed again, Sharon followed the link, which had apparently been sent to verify her identity. Clicked the link and I no longer had control of my Facebook account. They changed my telephone number, they changed my email address. So when I tried to reactivate my account, all the codes that were being sent by Facebook were going to this new number and new email address. Sharon realised the scammers were never interested in the caravan. Taking control of her Facebook account had been the goal all along. For now, there would be no sale, no money, and at a time when Sharon needed her friends and memories the most. She'd lost access to a place where she kept both. Desperate, she pleaded for them to return her account. I just said to them, if you could find it in your heart to reinstate my Facebook account, I would beg you to do so. Naturally, I didn't hear anything back. I did also try every which way to contact Facebook to ask them to help, and I've never heard anything back from them, so I've lost a lot of friends and contacts at a time when, you know, I could have done with friends and contacts. Cut off, and with someone else in control of her profile, the next stage of the scammer's plan unfolded. One of my sisters sent me a message on WhatsApp saying, oh, the hackers are at it again. They're trying to sell this watch and sent me the link, at which point I said, well, just please ignore it. Um, isn't it? I mean, these scams can just be so devastating for, for so many people, Rav. So what is the best way to protect ourselves from this type of scam? Well, there's a few things that we, we can all do to keep ourselves as safe as possible. One to remember is a Facebook user is never going to be verifying your identity via a link, and it looks like that's exactly what happened in, in this case. So if you get anything like that, straight away, ignore. The second really good tip is what's called two-factor authentication. You can do it on Facebook, you can do it on emails, you can do it on other social media sites. It's a really good extra level of security to prove you are who you say you are if you're trying to log in to that account. And it's, it's quite easy to do on Facebook. We can show you here. All you need to do is go into your, your settings there and then you'll see the tab that takes you through the security and login for two-factor authentication. You simply switch it on. It's, of course, completely free. And then from that moment, if you need to log into your account elsewhere, you will always get a text message or a warning that someone else is trying to do that or to make sure you are who you say you are. It's really, really good tip that I, I suggest everyone turns on. Absolutely. Yeah, good advice. Yeah. We actually contacted Facebook about this and about what's happened here. It said it's sorry to hear people are being misled in this way. It said it doesn't allow fraudulent activity and that it works closely with law enforcement to support investigations and keep scammers off its platforms. I have a bit of an update for you as well, because Sharon has since got her Facebook access oh, back. Oh, that's so yeah. good. Yeah. That's all she wanted, all yeah. those pictures, those memories. All the memories. Exactly. Those cool. It meant a lot to her, didn't it? That's yeah. really good news, Rav. Let's talk about one another week. We've mentioned, obviously, the coronation is coming up, and the scammers, they're just trying to capitalise on this, aren't they? Especially when it comes to the merchandise around... Yeah you know, the coronation. And so many people want to get involved in, in that, of course, mm -hmm. as, as you would expect. In fact, nearly £250 million pounds is, is said to be spent on souvenirs and memorabilia for the coronation. But as you say, scammers are tapping into this market. Now, we have seen this very recently. A warning has come out from Hertfordshire Police that uh, a male in his 60s got a, a cold call, so a phone call out the blue, offering these commemorative coins. They will look similar to something like this. They offered this set of coins, extremely expensive, £1,600. They were said to be inc incredibly rare. He tried to make a transaction from his home and it didn't go through, so we went to his local library where he was going to use the internet down there to do it. Now, by chance, there happened to be some cyber protect officers. These are civilian staff that work with the police who were giving an educational talk about cyber security at the library. And they said, no, this is a complete scam. Do not transfer this money. And thankfully, thanks to them, this man's money is safe. But it just proves these scams are out there. People are calling people out of the blue, offering things like this that simply don't exist. He's not going to get any coins. It was just a complete scam. And thankfully, this man has saved his £1,600. That warned. was lucky, oh, wasn't it? Very lucky, very lucky indeed. So the advice there is, you know, what not to take the, the cold call and not to respond if someone calls you out of the blue. Like Geth, I, I think you're absolutely right. That would be my advice. If you get a call out of the blue, treat it with suspicion rather than take the call and then wonder if it's genuine or not. Treat it suspicious first because these scams are out there and then unless you're absolutely confident, then 
go through with it. But have a look at this. Here's, here's some of my tips here. First of all, don't reveal any personal details if you get a scam call or any sort of cold call out of the blue straight away. Of course, this is what scammers want from you. Hang up. Don't be afraid to hang up. Take your time. Think about what's just happened. Make your own inquiries and just say, do you know what? I'm going to have a think about this. I'm going to phone you back. I'm going to phone back the organisation you claim to be and find out if this is real or not. And the bottom one there, don't be rushed. That yeah. is crucial. Yeah. Scammers well, want to do that. It? They want to rush you. Don't be rushed. That's how people lose money most of the time. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rob. Uh, thanks as well to Sharon for sharing yeah, her story absolutely. before. Uh, because if you've been affected by a scam uh, and want to share your story with us, then we'd love you to get in touch. Details are on the screen now. It can really help to raise awareness and uh, hopefully stop other people getting conned. Uh, now we're celebrating a local hero who's gone above and beyond to help others in their community. It's a lovely story. It is, isn't it? Yeah, to mark the crowning of His Majesty King Charles III and Her Majesty the Queen Consort, the Royal Voluntary Service has picked some coronation champions, an amazing group of volunteers who've made a really big impact. And our gardener, Mark Lane, helped surprise one of them. <laughs> Alex was born in South America, but for the past two decades she's called Macclesfield in Cheshire her home, and it's a place she has poured her heart into. She's amazing. I have never met anybody like Alex. Alex's gardening skills have totally transformed the look of some local spaces. Alex is completely unique. She is clever, funny, she's just so, so kind. And the lives of the people who use them. She must have the biggest heart in the entire world. She's a pillar of the local community, but there's one particular achievement which Ruth Smith is from the local council. Everybody on this list we took to see this particular allotment had one look at it and said, I don't want it. <laughs> It was like a jungle, wow. it was horrendous. It was a complete wilderness. You could hardly get through the gate. Where other people just saw impossibilities, Alex saw opportunity. She jumped at the chance and within three months, it was transformed. And the transformation's been absolutely phenomenal. I don't think anybody apart from Alex could have done it. That tenacity, that energy, that drive to do things, you know, she doesn't give up on anything. The group in the land are now known as Grow Macclesfield, but it's about far more than gardening. She now has groups from the Scouts come, she has social prescribing groups yeah. come. I know she has youth offenders come down yeah. and different charities as well. It's not just about the growing in the plants, it's about the getting together. Yeah. It's just a really peaceful place. Alex has brought the community together through her grit and determination. And it was her daughter, Kira who wanted to celebrate her achievements with a royal recognition. So Kira, why did you want to nominate your mum to be a coronation champion? I think she gets enjoyment out of reaching other people. She's very like selfless, like she decides to help others. She's going to have a fab time then when she goes to Buckingham Palace. She's going to be living her dream. Along with all her other projects, Alex is also helping her local church with their coronation celebrations. And so we couldn't think of a better place for Alex to receive her royal recognition, a Coronation Champion Award. She thinks she's been called in to spruce up the garden and has absolutely no idea that we've planted something of our own, a morning live film crew. <laughs> been turned around. I can see strawberries, beans, tulips, daffodils. There's so much going on. It's just brilliant. Absolutely. So much to enjoy there. Alex, a massive congratulations on what you've achieved thank and you. thank you. But it's not just us that want to say thanks. Thank you for all that you've done in our community. I particularly value the way that you are so enthusiastic, so energetic, so encouraging. Uh, and your grace and generosity is just wonderful. People come here several times a week and benefit from learning how to cultivate things, from meeting one another, from, from a fantastic community project. And it's all driven by Alex and who Alex is and what Alex does. All kinds of different people from all different backgrounds 
We've been united by a love of gardening. I'm deeply proud of what you do. I'm delighted that you're part of our community. Well done, Alejandra. I would love to say a massive congratulations to my mum for everything you have done for our community. I know how much this award will truly mean to you. Thank you for all your work with the young people in Macclesfield. It's greatly appreciated. You're definitely making a difference. Alex, you have done something really wonderful, so well done you. Mark, can you make yourself useful? Absolutely. Hi, Alex. I've got your certificate and your invitation to that incredible royal party at Buckingham Palace. So why don't you just come on down? <laughs> Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm not alone when Alex arrives, as the local community have turned out to show their appreciation too. Wow. I've been crying then, I'm gonna go out right here. Here we are. Alex, congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations. How are you feeling, Alex? I feel very honoured oh. and very emotional. Uh, what a privilege. What a privilege. I mean, I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Alex has not just built a garden here. With her hard work and heart for people, she's building a real community that's working together to improve the spaces around them and the friendships between them. It is Aww. her happy place, and I'm sure she'll be very happy when she heads to Buckingham Palace. What a day. And she deserves amazing. it. amazing. Alex, you are brilliant. And whilst there's been lots in the news about the coronation at the moment, another story you might have seen this week is safety measures being introduced to protect sports players from concussion. Yeah, as well as football's governing body, FIFA, hiring concussion spotters at this year's Women's World Cup, new official guidelines on how to identify, manage and prevent the issue in grassroots sports has been put in place. And Dr Poonam, when we talk about concussion, you always think head injury, don't you? But those first 24 hours after a head injury, they are so important, aren't they? Really important. And actually, for far too long, it's not been appreciated. And unfortunately, it has caused in cases irreversible damage so it's important that we're speaking about it you know Kat Merchant she's a former England rugby player has recently you know shared her story and that unfortunately she had to take early retirement after suffering from 11 concussions in just 14 seasons and she thinks that she's been left with you know long-term brain functioning problems as a result so it's brilliant that we now have formal guidance in place and this is nationwide which is to protect and to reduce the rare but sometimes very serious and lifelong effects mm from head injuries and concussions. And this isn't just for people that are doing elite sports, it's for anyone doing sports at any level. And it's protective even for our children. So the guidance now, you know, the motto that they're using is, if in doubt, you sit out. So if you've had a high impact head injury, then you're taken off the pitch for 24 hours, you're properly assessed, appropriately managed, and then you have a 21 day rest period to really allow for the healing of the brain. Yeah, you, you see the frustration, don't you? Whether it's professional players yeah. or you know, my nephews, if they're taken off, it's this good reason for it. Yeah. But in the moment, you want to keep want to playing. Play on, yeah. That's the thing, but you, you, you want to come off. I, I mean, you see that, don't you, on the telly? You see them coming off. But what, what's going on with concussion? What's going on? to the body in that in that moment. Yeah, so concussion, it's a type of traumatic brain injury. So it can happen to anyone at any stage. You know, we've just talked about sports players, but essentially anything that causes a big blow, you know, to the head. And what happens in that moment, you know, if you've got that back and forth movement, that shaking of the brain inside the skull, it can cause chemical changes, it can cause inflammation, which can also damage the cells of your brain and it can affect your brain functioning. So, you know, I often see elderly patients who might have fallen down the stairs or in winter months they slip on the ice and they bang their head. I see young children who have fallen from heights in the park. Mm. It can happen also... to anyone, can't yeah, it? Yeah, it can. I'm talking about sport. But, yeah. Absolutely. You know, you get that jolt. Um, for example, another common cause, unfortunately, I've had my own personal experience, car crashes. My goodness, yeah. yeah. You know, a few weeks ago I had that. I was, you know, driving, you know, doing the average speed, but ended up crashing, the head went forward, it hit the airbag back again. And you know, at the time, although I didn't lose consciousness, several weeks on, I'm still struggling with, you know, some of the symptoms like brain fog and concentration. Mm. So it's very real. 
Well, you'll know more than most, won't you? What are some of the signs that we need to, to look out for if it's happened to yourself or, or someone else after, yeah. you know, an So injury? the symptoms are wide ranging and can range from mild to more serious. They typically come on from anywhere within 24 to 48 hours. The common ones tend to be, you know, headaches, feeling a bit nauseous, dizzy off balance. Um, it can affect your memory, as I was just saying there. But it's known when do you go to a &E. So if you have had a significant blow to the head, um, with or without consciousness, you've got a severe headache that comes on, you might start vomiting. Um, if you have any, particularly with children, behavioural changes, if they're crying a lot more, irritable, um, anything like that at all, then you must go to A&E. But then you need to know, well, when do you call 999? Yeah. What if you're with someone that's just kind of fallen and banged their head? And with that, if there's been any loss of consciousness, if you've witnessed them having a seizure, if there's any clear fluid or blood coming out of the nose or the ears, if their balance is altered, they're, you know, talking funny, anything like that at all, then 999, get them the help immediately. Yeah, you mentioned that concussion can happen to anyone at any yeah. point. Quite a few points there to look through, so we'll make sure they're on the Morning Live website for you to have a good look mm -hmm. at, because they might be really handy if it happens to someone yeah. you know um, at the time. Uh, what about managing it yeah. then, especially someone who lives on their own, what can they do to make sure um, everything's okay? Yeah, it's a brilliant question because often concussion can be seen as an invisible injury, right? So if you were to break your leg, you'd have a cast, you'd be mm. told to rest and people do it. But when it comes to your brain, often people don't take the advice and rest is really important. If you think there's all this inflammation happening inside your brain, you want to give it everything to, to help heal. So rest, you want to limit the screen time. So lots of studies are emerging that show that actually limiting your screen time in that time can actually reduce your recovery time That's interesting. you want to eat for your brain so think of the rainbow lots of nuts seeds minimize the amount of alcohol again thinking of just improving brain health and if you can just gentle exercising to help encourage brain flow blood flow to the brain so all these things make a big difference so just thinking you're going to come to work in a massive bandage just to make sure yeah do you know what we should give it just yeah, to be just like do you know what this anything. person needs to heal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get some rest thanks Poonam. Uh, hopefully you'll be good enough for the weekend as we know you're having a big party yeah. for the coronation some people might be putting up their uh, bunting or getting it primed and maybe the fancy cutlery will oh, be out yes. polished ready for for a street party this weekend, or maybe just having friends round uh, for dinner over the bank holiday. Are you doing that? I'm staying with mum, and you oh. know what she's like. She'll be having a party, oh, so be a I'll rave. be getting involved. It'll be a rave <laughs> maybe. She's on tomorrow. We'll find out about that, maybe. Uh, whatever you're doing, we're about to make a show-stopping meal that could make you the talk of the town. Over the last two weeks, The One Show has teamed up with Dame Mary Berry and the Coronation Big Lunch to find a dish that's perfect for celebrations across the country. And the competition was tough, wasn't it? Five winners from BBC's MasterChef, The Professionals and Great British Menu came up with a savoury treat. And here's the winning moment. As chosen by The One Show viewers, the Coronation dish is... The majestic chicken pie. Oh, <laughs> oh that's delicious. Wonderful. That is wonderful. Oh, brilliant. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. And here is look, oh, yeah. the majestic chicken pie. Oh. And the winning uh, chef, Adam Hanling, is with us this morning. Adam, congratulations. Thank you very much. What a brilliant <coughs> moment. You were quite surprised, actually, when all the, the glitter went off there, weren't you? But uh, <laughs> how does it feel to be crowned the champion? I was, I was a little speechless. <clears throat> I was a little speechless. It's a, it's a pinch me moment. I'm a massive royalist and this is a historic event. So to be a part of it and uh, help create an awesome dish for the big lunch is, is great. Yeah, Michelle was saying there the competition uh, was tough, so it had to be pretty decent. And I think you'll agree it Smell is it absolutely you. amazing. What's absolutely fantastic right now, we're going to learn how to make it. This yeah. is awesome. Where do we start? So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to make the sauce. But first of all, we're just going to, our, our uh, chicken that we're going to get, six little thighs, we're going to just flour them, fry them off till they're nice and golden, and our vegetables as well. So one leek, one onion, 250 grams of, uh, of mushrooms. And then you're going to roast them, let them sit in the same pan. I'm going to make a sauce. And Michelle, if you wouldn't mind just lining the pastry for us. Sue chef Ooh. it for you, Adam. But what, it's super easy. We're going to be making a roux, so equal quantities, flour and butter, 75 grams of each. And you're going to just put it in. Melt it all, cook it down. This thickens your sauce and makes it really, really awesome. Is equal quantities the key to is, good sauce? Yeah, big time, especially when it comes to a flour-based one because you don't want it to be grainy and floury. You want it to be 
super yummy and make it into a sauce. Okay. Am I doing this right, Adam? You are. So with that. Within, <laughs> within within this pie, we're using uh, short bought puff pastry, so it's nice and nice. It's, it's nice and easy to overlap it. You know, make overlap, make, make yeah. yeah make what, it, so you don't have to be fussy. Don't be fussy well, at all. Good. So you know, we've pre-done one here, but after it's cooked, then we trim it up. Oh, Is that's that okay? okay. That's the. There's a few gaps, but. Ooh, not bad. Yeah, she, she, you went quiet. That means not, um, <laughs> literally no um, comment whatsoever there. I think that's a fan. Well, well, the bottom. I just slapped that in the bottom there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. that's what you just slapped that that, that right. one there. What's going on with the sauce? Oh, he's furious. Oh no! Not at all. Not at all. These little gaps. It's puff pastry. It all mold together. So if we just use our fingers. Okay. Fill I'll up, cover those gaps, gaps for you. And then we're going to uh, put the greaseproof paper in it, and then put your rice, baking beans, anything you want. Right, so You've put... Got to fill it up. Why but is that important? Just underneath the rice. Why do we do this, like... So, to blind bake something is to, to really make it crispy so that okay. it doesn't... so that it doesn't get a soggy bottom, really. You want it got to be you. really golden and uh, baked. This is a self-sourcing pie. So, I've added my cheese, which is... Uh, just trying to remember, 220 grams of cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, our, my, our cream, 250, and 225 chicken stock. So, bought in chicken stock. Mm -hmm. I don't make chicken stock in the house. The packet ones are perfect. So bring this all to the boil and you'll make a really thick, nice cheese sauce. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, Adam, do you want all this rice in here? Nice to the, fill it to the top, to the or as much top. as you can without it falling out. <laughs> You're so nervous, I can <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the reason you fill it right to, the top is, right to the top is you don't want any of the top part of the pie to puff out when you bake it. OK. And then you're going to put that in the oven, 180, for 30 minutes, and then it's going to come out looking like this. Lovely. Which is nicely baked. But That's like a big Yorkshire pudding. Yeah. But, but what I did do is I have egg wash and I brush the inside of egg and then I put it back in the oven for not very long, for about 10, 15 minutes is fine. And that basically acts as, you know, like a swimming pool. It's got a lining, stops the water coming out. The egg does the same. So if there is any little crack, like you, we, we may have potentially made I a see. slight little one, got but you. the egg kind of fills in the gaps. So, you know, we all it's do useful. it. And then after that, this sauce is going to come to the boil. Uh, is, is there a good reason why I've not been involved with anything so far? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, have the, you have the main event to make it look pretty. Can I do? So just on the left on the left hand side of the decorations, yeah. you're just going to stamp them out. And I like. You've got, yeah, you've got a few stars. I'll use stars. <laughs> eh? Can I do anything then with these? Can I just yeah, do, on this one? Yeah, the smaller one. Okay. Just, yeah, cut them out, and we're going to um, we're going to decorate the pie. And the one thing I, I wanted to use cutters for instead of all of the fancy chef stuff is you can just make it really fun. Yeah. You can you can make letters, you can do well, anything. Well, you know, like Rav's stamps. making crowns with his little one uh, uh, the weekend. Maybe you can do a bit of puff pastry as well. I don't know his cooking tips. Like, oh, my, oh, do some sure. lips here. And you can use, like, knives and forks for stencils. My mum sometimes yeah. uses a fork to, like, make leaves, yeah, you know, yeah. pastry. As that, with, that my mum would have done exactly the same yeah. as well. So as the sauce is getting made, I do a teaspoon of pepper and two of salt. This is a big teaspoon, so I'm only going to do one and a half of these. But the idea for this is, if you you've got to season it perfectly now, because this right. is a self -so self sourcing pie. Easy for you to say. And yeah, self sourcing pie. Um, so when you put the lid on, there is no changing it. Right. It's got to be good. Yeah. All right. Now the sauce. Are we is made. close? We are close. Now the sauce is made. We're going to add our vegetables and chicken back to the pie. I love it when you can Come just on, chuck man, everything in. I think food is... Keep them hanging around. Especially food at home. It's, uh, you've got to be so much more easier. So that's just going to go and straight that's it. into... So no need to no, pull it down. Fork. Straight in the he pie brought case. brought their own forks. <laughs> ready, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Where's my breakfast? <laughs> Adam, I know you've done this in a rush, but my goodness, does it look good. Oh, yeah. What? It looks so that's tasty. the time did it. And then fill it straight to the top. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you can see how my pastry is all lying over the outside. If someone can you just pass me the egg, please? Oh, yeah. And the little pastry Of brush. course, that would, yeah, don't use your fingers. That'd be silly. You're going to not trim it. You're going to just brush that with egg. And then when you do that, I'm going to take... Okay, no pressure. Oh, yes. Can you cut? I'm a bit nervous, Kelly. I get really nervous. So you're about nervous now. I've been the first oh, one to destroy well, a pie. I need this part. Oh, you need that part. Oh, okay, hang on. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> place it over the top. Oh, I see. OK. Ah. And then okay. stretch it over. And then like you're going to bake it in the oven like this. Cut it. Go on. <laughs> give, him a, give him a piece, quick. Right then. You're going to have to share a plate. Oh, look at that. Chris, how Remind long is that us how long is, for, Yeah, how, how long is that in for? Uh, an hour in the oven. An hour so, in the oven, OK. Again, self-sourcing. If it's hot, 
If it's not hot, it's going to set and you can serve it perfectly well. I'll tell you what, you serve that now because we need to move on. You have a little taste. We're, hey, we're not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You don't you worry about us. We'll be here for the rest of the show. <laughs> lovely. OK, lovely stuff. Crack on. You keep going. That is absolutely delicious. Thank you, Adam. And, of course, we'll put the recipe for Adam's uh, coronation dish on our website. Is it gone? Is it good? You don't oh, need to run away. Stop doing that. that. <laughs> He's left, weirdly. Uh, <laughs> luckily, our next guest uh, hasn't, and he has grilled a selection of guests for his BBC show, Amor Rajan Interviews. It's back for a new series, and as always, no topic is off limits. Yeah, he delves into the minds of leaders, entrepreneurs and maverick thinkers, and tonight he catches up with Sir Richard Branson, who discusses one of his proudest achievements, going into space. Yeah, so we've, we've gone from <laughs> naught to... 3,000 miles an hour in seven or eight seconds. So you've got the, the, this incredible rush as you, as you go up into space. And then the absolute silence of space. I looked back at the Earth and said a few words to kids. To all you kids down there, I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship with lots of other wonderful adults looking down to our beautiful, beautiful Earth. That's incredible, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And Amal, actually, we're all very excited about the next uh, series. So much incredible insight into the minds of people like Sir Richard Branson, who's got some story to tell, hasn't he? He's got an amazing story. I mean, I honestly think, I honestly think this is the best interview that I've ever been part of, and it wow. was a privilege to be part of because, um, and it's not because of anything I've done. Honestly, it wasn't the calibre of the questions or anything like that. He has just had the most extraordinary, most astonishing life. You know, he is this child of the 60s. He's a hippie, basically, by his own uh, <laughs> admission. He grew up in the 60s. And what he's done is he's reinvented industry after industry. He reinvented publishing. He reinvented music. He reinvented uh, plane travel with Virgin Atlantic. And now he's trying to reinvent space travel as well. So he's had this amazing life. He's got this weird obsession with danger. You know, he's had over 70 near-death experiences and quite a few controversies as well. So he flew us out. He didn't fly us fly, fly. So that'd be against BBC guidelines. <laughs> we flew ourselves out. We flew ourselves out to uh, on a on a rival airline, I dare say, to uh, to Miami, and we did a really amazingly frank interview. And it's um it's a good watch. I've got to say, I'm really proud of it. It's on the iPlayer now as well. The yeah, people you meet, though, Mol, are fascinating. I mean, the likes of Greta Thunberg, Bill Gates, Novak Djokovic. It must be such an experience for you, though, actually going into their homes. You know, you're getting all comfy. You're in the kitchen, sat with them. What, what, yeah. what is that like? What are the houses like? Do you ever get thrown out? <laughs> yeah, I've never been thrown out yet. Though I suppose if I was doing my job properly, I would get thrown out. Maybe there's there's time for that in future. I tell you, it's an amazing thing to sort of lose yourself in someone's world. You know, if you're interviewing Novak Djokovic, you know he's a great tennis player, but you don't know much about his personality. And then for a few days, you're in their world. And one of the big things that I've taken away from all those people that you mentioned, Bill Gates or Greta Thunberg, is that I feel like I've actually learned a lot. We've all learned a lot in recent years about what I would call neurological diversity. And I know there's a lot of parents, a hell of a lot of parents watch uh, Morning Live, and some of them might be concerned about the fact that their kids might have been diagnosed with an autism or Asperger's or dyslexia or ADHD. And, you know, just as you, even as you say it there a moment ago, Michelle, I realise that a lot of the people that I've interviewed are people who have what you'd call neurologically diverse conditions. So Greta Thunberg has got Asperger's. She's very open about how that's her superpower. I asked Bill Gates about uh, whether or not he had it, and he said, well, when I was young, I had this unusual ability to focus. Richard Branson had dyslexia so badly as a kid at a time when people didn't know what dyslexia was that he was beaten. He talks very movingly about that in the program. Oh, and he's also got a little bit of ADHD. So one of the big things about getting invited into these people's worlds is you realise that they are people who've turned what might have been a weakness into a superpower. And I just say to parents who are watching, who see tonight's programme or see any of the series, that, you know, there is a bit of inspiration and reassurance there that if your kid has got a condition that people, you know, are worried about or anxious about, there are world beaters, there are global icons who've turned it into a superpower, like Branson. Yeah, I love, love hearing that, actually. We talked about it a little bit on, on our show with, with Rav and his diagnosis yeah, yeah. with autism, being able to do what he does uh, on screen. Um, they are brilliant interviews um, and... You obviously put so much research into what you do. What, what's the prep like? What are you, what are you doing in a couple of days in the lead up to it? How do you get ready for these big get chats? Fight ready. I, usually, <laughs> I look at your Instagram, Geth, and then look at the pictures of you pumping, pumping weights. Well, that's not, not reality. Gethin. I'm all. 
Um, I, uh, look, it's intense. We've got this amazing team. We've got a wonderful new um, executive producer, a guy called Keir McKenzie. We've got six or seven people who are in a war room, and we really, really, several days before, and we come up with a plan, and then we refine it, and then I try to write the questions. I usually write slightly long questions, so we end up chopping it shorter and shorter. You read the books, you get an amazing briefing document, so you're, you are intensively prepared. And I really think that preparation is a mark of respect. You know, the more you respect someone, the harder you prepare. It's like a, a fighter in a big heavyweight boxing contest. They really, really work at it months in advance. And that also gives you a lot more confidence, so you don't feel like you're going to get caught out. But then on the day itself, I go into fight mode. I've got a Spotify playlist. I'm a, you know, I'm a reggae obsessive. I listen to a lot of uh, <laughs> songs by the likes of Bob Marley and the Wailers. And I'll play tunes like, I don't know if you know, Once in a Lifetime by Talking Heads, or oh, yeah. Lose Yourself some by Eminem, tunes, or yeah, some good I Love Plus by the Wailers. And I'll, I'll the listen to my Spotify playlist and get in the zone. I'm going to try that tomorrow. Well, we, did, we did a bit <laughs> of heavy metal before we spoke to him, so we were sorted. <laughs> uh, as you say, Amal, the series is available right now. Amal Rajan interviews, uh, and it's on tonight, Boobs 2, at 7 p.m. Just keep with the music theme, because you'll be getting rid of some dancing at the end of the show. Yeah, Amal, don't go it. anywhere yeah. for now. Cheers, Amal. Cheers, guys. Uh, now, throughout the morning, we've been discussing the big celebrations for the King's coronation, but May is traditionally the start of wedding season. It is, and once the knot has been tied, it's only right the bride and groom are covered in confetti. We look back now on a visit to one farm which specialises in producing the bright petals as spring moves into full bloom. <laughs> We're a bit different from other farms. We grow flowers and it's used for confetti. We do have our core colours, our pinks, purples, white. I like the bright colours the most just because they show up so much better in big confetti shots. From calendula to delphiniums to cornflowers, zinnias. We dry them and take off all the petals and send them worldwide. My name's Michael and this is my good lady wife, Rose. We've been farming the farm now since the 1930s. The very first person was my mother-in-law, Nanny Bub. She started growing in the garden and selling the few bunches on the WI market. She said jokingly one day, please put some more in the field because I haven't got enough to sell. So we started with half an acre and it progressed from there. I'm Jim Bubb and I look after all the petals here on the home farm. Every March and April, I get the responsibility of putting all the seeds in the ground. They've all got to come out at the same time to enable us to harvest. A good season would be probably three tonnes of petals. It's always a challenge with the flowers. Nothing is ever easy. I knew that from day one. But of course, when they do come out, they're not always the right colour, Rose, yeah. are they? We're always anxious to make sure that they are the right colours. I think it's a pink and it turns out to be a light blue or something. There's always been an argument whether that's my fault selecting the wrong bag or someone gave me the wrong seed. I'm obviously always thinking it's someone else's fault. It's the most satisfying thing to see the fields change across the year. Seeing sort of little tiny shoots come up is really quite magical. And then when the colour pops, it's pretty spectacular and it, it puts a smile on everyone's face. The summer is, it's harvest time and it's usually wedding season, um, so it's like a double whammy of being busy. The flowers on the farm are picked by hand. I like to work outside because I'm connected with uh, nature. Every day, you, I see the, the butterfly and the, the bees. It's about 6,000 petals that go into one litre of our confetti. And they come into the shed, and that's where we will pick and pack for all the orders that we dispatch. My mum definitely knows when I'm home, because I always leave a trail of confetti by the front door. It gets everywhere. I always tell the brides and the bride's mothers that uh, as soon as the confetti is thrown, that's the beginning of the party. 2019 was a pretty special year. I got married. We definitely had to have confetti from the farm. Confetti is a finishing touch. It's like that extra little bit on the top, but it just makes such a big difference. We have a really nice motto in the shed, is throw confetti like kindness. And so I think that's a bit to live by, definitely. 
it's gorgeous beautiful, place. beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it, Chess? Yeah. Let me see sustainability at the heart of what they do uh, as well. Uh, thanks for all your messages today. Um, uh, Rav, uh, we're talking about uh, cold calls earlier. Danielle says, I was with an elderly client yesterday and could hear him on the phone in another room. Alarm bells rang and I told him he was being scammed. Call a try ringing back three times. Persistent, aren't they? So glad I watched the programme. Thank you. Ah, brilliant. You're good. Yeah. Glad you watched this. Looking and, out for each other. And what at 10am this morning? Scam interceptors is back. Scam More of Rav. <laughs> it's going to be really weird because you're now going to see him dance. <laughs> and then you're going to see his serious side. He's multi-talented, isn't he? <laughs> this guy, man, this guy. You've not seen his dancing. <laughs> I've seen his dancing. I've danced with him. That's true, actually. Let's see it right now. Cue the music. <laughs> Hi, cats. Guys, we're only two days away from the coronation. And after learning this last move of the week, you'll be ready to celebrate properly. We will be adding the rolling of the arms done by Scott Mills and John Clifton. But first, we need to warm up our core, okay? Nice and simple, we're starting with our body twist. Put your hands in front of your chest and we count to three. One, two, and on a three, extend your hand all the way. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Very good, we're gonna do that four times. Moving on to some side obliques. Hands on your head and again counting to three. One, two on the three, touch the knee. Oh, one, on, two, touch surprising. the knee. One, <laughs> two, three, and one more. One, two, three. And moving on to our strictly move, which is arm rolls. But we're going to do it on the right and on the left. You can add a little bounce to it and on the left. Roll your arms, roll your arms. We are ready to Do party. It. Take it away, Alan. With a full body workout, it's Katia Jones. <laughs> 